Hi, and welcome to another episode of A Walk to Remember. My name is Dwayne Baker Henderson, and as always, I'll be your host as we explore some of the truths and the myths surrounding postpartum depression, as well as some tips that you can use to make your journey through postpartum depression a little bit easier, or the journey of someone you are supporting. Now, in this episode, I want to talk about the uh, distinct illnesses that make up postpartum depression. In the very first episode, uh, I had said that there were three very distinct uh, disorders that society's kind of grouped together and calls postpartum depression. Since that time, I found a very interesting article, which I'll link in the description below, uh, which breaks it down even further into five distinct illnesses. Now, I want to cover each of these illnesses, just give you an idea of what the symptoms are, um, when they happen, that kind of thing. And, uh, and in this episode, I'll, I'll cover the first three. Uh, there's the baby blues, there's postpartum panic disorder, there's postpartum obsessive compulsive disorder, <clears throat> excuse me, there's postpartum post-traumatic stress disorder, and postpartum psychosis. Now, uh, these all have varying uh, degrees of severity. Um, they're, some of them are not uncommon. For instance, the baby blues, uh, apparently, according to this uh, article, happens in 50 to 80 percent of new moms. Um, now, with uh, going through these, I will say I'm not a doctor, I'm not a mental health professional. Uh, if you do recognize any of these uh, symptoms as being part of your life right now, do seek professional help, uh, whether it's a medical doctor or a mental health professional or, or some other professional who, uh, who can help you out. Um, I'm not going to give any specific uh, medical advice or advice outside of just that you, uh, you seek somebody who can, who can help you on a professional level. Um, with that, let's get rolling uh, with these first three disorders. Uh, the first is the baby blues, and uh, this is by far the most common. Uh, according to this article in the American Journal of Clinical Medicine, they say that 50 to 80 percent of new moms may experience uh, the baby blues um, after the birth of their baby, and it usually occurs starting about a week after the baby is born and can go for a week or two after that. Uh, the symptoms can in include uh, rapid and extreme mood changes, frequent crying, anxiety, fatigue, insomnia, uh, anger, sadness, uh, irritability, and uh, while these things can be kind of uh, disruptive, they don't uh, stop the mother's ability to mother their new baby. Uh, it doesn't block any maternal instincts, which is a good thing. Uh, and usually this doesn't require uh, any medical intervention. Um, so if you, do, if you are experiencing these, talk to your doctor for sure. They probably won't prescribe anything. Um, but it's, it's something that is experienced by a huge number of, of women. Now, the next one, postpartum panic disorder, is a little bit more severe. And... Uh, it includes panic attacks for the first time uh, for a mother. Uh, they may not have ever had panic attacks before this. And uh, the symptoms include things like intense fear, uh, heart palpitations, so your heart speeds up, sweating, shortness of breath, uh, chest pain, dizziness, lightheadedness, numbness, things like that, uh, as well as a fear of death or a feeling of, a, of loss of control. Um, now, the panic attacks are usually relatively short. Uh, they may hit a, a maximum after about 10 minutes after the onset of the panic attack. And these are a little bit uh, tougher to deal with than the baby blues. So definitely seek out professional help if, if you are experiencing these. Um, and in the study, they, they don't tell what, uh, what percentage of, of women may encounter this. Uh, the third one I want to talk about today is postpartum obsessive, obsessive compulsive disorder. And uh, this is very similar to OCD uh, with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. There's obsessiveness uh, and compulsive, compulsive behavior. So what that means is you have unwanted thoughts with uh, possibly uh, accompanying behaviors. And... Uh, the thing that differentiates this from something like postpartum psychosis is that uh, you understand that these are just thoughts and uh, the thoughts are yours. And they might not be 
um, thoughts that you would normally think. They may not be uh, very welcome thoughts, but they're they're just thoughts. And uh, and you know that uh, these aren't necessarily things you want to act upon. Now, um, there have been instances, they give an example in this article about people avoiding uh, certain things just because they don't want um, a certain circumstance to happen. Uh, for an example, uh, removing all the knives from their kitchen or something like that. And that is perfectly normal um, with uh, postpartum obsessive compulsive, compulsive disorder. Um, it's, it's basically just uh, you understand that uh, you're having these thoughts, you're a little concerned that you might act on them, and so you do something so you can't act on them. Uh, there's some consciousness there. Um, you may still act on some of the compulsive uh, um, impulses that you get. For instance, washing your hands or changing a baby that's, that's already dry, that kind of thing. But... Uh, as I said, this is this is differentiated from postpartum psychoses in the fact that uh, you are conscious that these are thoughts and that you don't have to act on them. Um, so those are the very first three parts of uh, what make up postpartum depression as uh, society understands it. Um, I will talk about the other two, postpartum post-traumatic stress disorder and postpartum psychosis in the next episode. But if you are feeling any of these things, like I said, do uh, contact your physician or some other health professional who might be able to give you some, uh, some help with those. And uh, there are uh, pharmaceutical ways to, uh, to help with these, and there's other ways that you can do it without pharmaceuticals as well. I'm not going to make any, any recommendations there. Um, I know that my wife and I went one of those two ways, which I won't uh, bring up here. And uh, it was still difficult, but, uh, but we got through it. And you can too. So just know that, uh, that there are a lot of people that are going through exactly the same thing. You're not alone. Um, uh, these, these illnesses may happen alone or they may happen together. So if you see yourself in a couple of these different disorders, um, don't necessarily be surprised, but don't, uh, don't panic about it. Uh, just seek some help from, from a health professional. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about today. If you did find some value in this for yourself, please leave it a like. Uh, if you think there might be value for someone else, please share it with them. Put your comments below. I'd love to hear about your story or uh, what you have to think about what I've said so far and uh, ideas you might have for what I could talk about in the future. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to hear what's coming up next. And we'll see you in the next one. Be well, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.